Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeannie and I'm not even close to being done with Halloween manis yet, so stay tuned. But today we've got a fun one because we're gonna be playing with West Coast Dips 2022 Halloween Mystery Box. So I just wanna quickly show you what's in the mystery box. And if you haven't experienced West Coast Dips mystery boxes, you are missing out. So there's not really a regular cadence of the boxes. I believe the last one she released, if I'm not mistaken, was a Mother's Day mystery box. But they are always so good. They never disappoint. They're always full of goodies. And this one is no different. And I actually love that even though it's a Halloween mystery box, she went outside of the box and went with like a sugar skull theme instead of like what you traditionally see for Halloween with like the black, the orange, and you know, the purple and all those. So this is just really fun. The colors coordinate well together. And I just love everything in here. It's always an experience. And you know, she just, the attention to detail that she has is just amazing. I am an ambassador for West Coast Dips, but I did pay for this box myself. But regardless of that, I just want to let you know that all opinions on my channel are my own and I'll always give you my honest feedback. And my honest feedback is I am obsessed with this box. Just wait till you see my Manny. I probably went just a little bit overboard, but I couldn't help myself because I loved all the colors and I had to figure out a way that I could use them all because I just couldn't. I couldn't pick which one not to use because they are just, I mean, just look at them. The glitters are stunning. The glow, wait till you see the glow. Oh my gosh, you know I love glow. So just wait. I'm guessing, or maybe it's more of hoping, that her next mystery box will be a Christmas mystery box. I did get the Christmas mystery box last year and I loved it so much. So hopefully there's another one soon because I just always have so much fun with them. And I'm not even a huge person, like I don't really like mystery boxes and surprises, but there's certain companies that I absolutely trust that I know I'll love everything I got. Even if it's not something that I would normally buy, it was still something that kind of gets me outside my comfort zone, something I'll use. So in this West Coast Dips is definitely one of those companies where I absolutely trust everything that she has. Before I get into a Manny, I just wanna show you the swatches of all these colors. The first one is the gel and I mean, come on, just look at these colors. They all go together so well and they're just so beautiful. So hopefully I do them justice with this Manny that I do. I was totally serious when I said we were gonna use all the colors of this box. Well, all the dips. I'm not gonna use the gel, that's for another time. So I'm starting with the neon yellow shimmer, which is Halloween number five, and this is a glow powder. So I'm just giving it a stir so I can stir up the glow pigments. Because glow pigments are heavier, they can settle. So in order to ensure I get maximum glow, I always make sure I stir my powder beforehand. And I will also be using my West Coast Dips, Dip Liquids. These are some of my favorites. They are so easy to use. I absolutely love them. So just applied a thin layer of dip base onto my index finger and then did that dip into number five. And per my usual process, I will do two dips of color and then at the end, we will cap in clear. This yellow isn't normally a color I would gravitate towards, but together with the rest of the colors and like the glitter it just goes so well with everything and it just makes a cohesive mani and of course i had to do a full nail of it because it's a glow so i just wanted you know as much glow as possible so i'm really glad so that's what i said about mystery boxes and kind of making me go outside of my comfort zone so you know this box helped me use these colors that i wouldn't normally buy or i wouldn't normally wear and now we're gonna get into our freehand color block. So what you see me doing here is tapping the jars against the table. Because you want your dip powders to be as level as possible, so that's really leveling out the powders in the jar. And what you also saw me do was rearrange the, the yellow and the teal because I want to keep the jars in the order that I'm gonna dip them or else I'll just confuse myself. So it's just easier for me to have them ready in the order instead of having to stop and think about it and my dip base dry on me. 
So I'm going to apply a full layer of dip base onto my middle finger and then once I'm done with that I'm going to slowly angle my finger into that jar of teal just about where I want it and then once I'm done I can pull that out let it sit for just a second and then tap off the excess and I'll do the same for the yellow. I'll just slowly guide my finger at the angle I want into the jar and then tap off the excess and then the same thing for the third for the glitter I'll just dip my finger in because the rest is covered so there's just that wet dip base at the top that's going to pick up the glitter so it's really that easy I will say though with this method you're not going to get super crisp lines so the only reason I'm okay with this method is because I'm going to draw over those lines with some gel liner so it's not going to really matter that it's not super crisp and then you'll see here I did get a little bit of teal in my yellow which it was only a tiny bit so I could just mix it back in and it's not going to really compromise the color but I would caution that if you're doing this method as well is you can contaminate your powders if you do this method so you know just just something to keep in note so you see me here too I've got to rearrange everything to keep it in the order and I was having a hard time deciding what order I wanted it in so that's what you see here is me being indecisive as usual trying to figure out where I wanted the colors because I wanted to do the same design sort of but different colors so same thing I'll apply a full layer of dip base onto my ring finger only this time I decided I want the angle to go in the opposite direction of my middle finger so I'm just going to slowly guide my finger at an angle into that glitter and then I'll tap off the excess and I'll do the same in the opposite direction into the glitter. I'll slowly guide my finger into that glitter and let that sit for a second. Tap off the excess and then dip into the teal. And I know it looks crazy, but the teal, once I dust off the excess, the teal does not cover up my glitters. I know it looks like it did, but once you dust, it'll be fine. So I'm going to do a second layer of this freehand color block, and it's going to be the same process. So I want to tap my jars to make sure that my powders are level. And then I also want to get the colors in the order that I'm going to dip them, just so I'm ready with my dip base. Now when I apply my dip base, I'm going to apply it on the yellow and teal first and then work my way up to the glitter because if there happen to be any loose glitters, I don't want to drag them down into the colors. So that's why I'm doing it that way. So once I've got my dip base on, I will use my existing first layer colors as my guide on how far I need to dip in. So you can see here, I dip to where the end of the teal is. So I kind of have like a little guide and I'm trying to get off a little more of the excess powder so I have less contamination. So then I'll go into the yellow, going up to the yellow line of the first dip. And of course, I did still get a little bit of teal in there, but that's fine. It's still a minimal amount to where it's not going to it's not going to compromise the the yellow color. So I'll just I'll be bad and I'll mix that in. If if you really bothered you, you could take like a little spoon and just or a cuticle pusher and just fish it out, but I was just being lazy if I'm being honest. So I'm going to stop talking and let you watch me do my second layer for my ring finger.
Just hopping back in really quickly. I'm not sure what happened, but you can see that spot there. I wasn't sure whether I just didn't get dip on it, but it dried, my dip base dried too quickly on me. So there's this bare spot that didn't get any powder. So I'm just giving a quick dust off and I'm just gonna apply a little bit more dip base just to that area. So I'm just being very careful. It's kind of hard with a dip base brush just to get a small area, but as close to it as I can, I'm trying to apply it so that I can apply a second layer of teal. I don't feel like I was moving any slower than I was for any of the other layers, but for some reason, the dip base dried on me, but that's fine. We, we worked it out. There was no issues. I know I say it a lot, but I'm a huge advocate of clean as you go. And I got glitter everywhere and made a giant mess. So I'm just using my desktop vacuum to clean it up before I move on. So now that my station's back to clear, I'm going to be using the West Coast Dips Clear to cap everything in clear. And because there are glitters in here, I'm just going to go ahead and pour over my clear dip powder. And here there were some glitters that were contaminated into my dip base brush. So I'm just giving that a wipe off on a lint free wipe because I don't want to get any of those loose glitters onto any of my solid nails. So now that I've done that, I'll go ahead and cap and clear activate file and buff off camera and then we'll be back for some nail art stickers I was wrong. I'm actually going to get into the gel liners before we get into the nail art stickers. So I am already filed and buffed though. And so I'm just going to, I'm trying to figure out like where I want my hand to be to be able to draw these lines. And so of course I get some gel on my finger, hot mess, but I just wipe that off with a lint free wipe and some alcohol. And you know, it's, it's fine. As long as you don't cure the gel, you can remove it easily. So while that's drying, I'm gonna start on my ring finger this time and hopefully not get gel everywhere. So I'm just wiping off the excess of my gel liner just so I have just a little bit of gel on that brush so I can get a thinner line. And so where the colors meet is where I'm gonna draw that line. So this is why I didn't really care that I didn't have super crisp lines with my freehand color block because I knew I was just gonna draw over it with the gel liner. I mean, you could also use striping stickers as well to kind of cover up that not so perfect line. So there are ways to hide it without having to just have like crooked lines. So once I've got that, I'll do that in the second spot where the other two colors meet. And then I'm just kind of checking to make sure I got everything. And then once I'm done with that, we're going to kind of do like a stitch pattern. So going across the lines that I just drew, I'm just going to draw little tick marks across them to kind of make like little stitches. Now I will say, if you're not comfortable and you're afraid you're going to touch your gel before you cure it. You can flash cure it before you start these stitches. So just put your hand in your lamp for about 10, 15 seconds, give it a flash cure. And that way, when you get to the stitches, the, your solid lines that you did, your larger lines are already cured. You don't have to worry about them moving or messing them up. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just being brave and I didn't flash cure my left hand before, I mean, my left hand, my ring finger before I did my 
middle finger, which was risky because I could have smudged it, but I just, I don't know. I just went ahead, I went for it. So now I'm working and doing the same thing on my middle finger where I'm just drawing my solid lines where the two colors meet. And then I'll do the same thing of drawing those tick marks to make kind of that stitch pattern. Once I'm done with that, I will give these a full cure in my UV LED lamp for 60 seconds. Oh, and I should probably mention, because you probably have noticed, don't mind my shaky hands. I naturally don't have steady hands, but this is what happens when you do your nails and you don't bother to eat breakfast. So not only am I naturally shaky, I forgot to eat breakfast, so all I have in my stomach is coffee, so I'm even extra shaky. Now that my gel liner is fully cured, I'm going to get into the nail art stickers and I'll be using these tweezers to help me pick them up because they are very delicate and I don't want to tear them. So just choosing which sheet I want to use and then comes the hard task of which sticker on the sheet to use. So I won't even tell you how long I stared at them, but just showing what I chose here. They're harder to pick up because they're so thin. So what I find works best is just bending the sheet near the end of that sticker. And then that way you can kind of pull up that corner with your tweezers. I will say when you're placing it on the nail, well, don't drop it like I did, but when you're placing it on the nail, make sure you have it in the right spot before you press it down fully because once it's down, it's stuck and you'd have to buff it off. So make sure it's in the right spot. So that's what you kind of see me, like I'm kind of looking at it at all angles before I fully press it down just to make sure that's where I want it. So I'm gonna do the same for my middle and ring finger as well. So I'm just gonna gently pick up a sticker and then I'm going to figure out about where I wanna place it. Sometimes it is harder to get it off the pair of tweezers. You just have to get it to stick a little bit to the nail and then make sure it's in the right spot before you press down fully. Because once you press down fully, you are committed to that sticker. I will caution that nail art stickers are meant to be really thin so that you don't create a ledge when you're tap coating them. So you wanna be really, really careful because they're super easy to tear because they're so thin. So I'm just gonna place my last sticker on my ring finger. And again, I'm just kind of making sure I've got it where I want it. And it was, I was having a hard time getting it off the tweezer. So that's why I used kind of my thumbnail to kind of press it down just a little bit just to make it stick and then just checking angles. So make sure you're looking at it from every angle to make sure that it's straight, it's in the area you want it before you press down. So here we go. I'm gonna press down now and it was just that easy to use the nail art stickers. Now I am using dip top coat. So in order to protect the stickers, I need to go ahead and cap and clear before I activate for my top coat. And that's because the stickers are so thin, if I just went straight in with activator, it would eat through the sticker. So I'm just applying dip base to all my nails. I will cap and clear and then activate over the clear and then we'll just give it a light buff.
I went ahead and activated all my nails and waited two minutes and now I'm going in with my first layer of my dip top coat. So for your dip top coat, what you wanna do is for your first layer, you wanna do two to three really quick swipes on each nail. You don't wanna to linger too much on the nail and risk contaminating your brush with activator. And then before you return it to the bottle, you wanna wipe your brush on a lint-free wipe just in case you got any activator on it. And then once you're done with all five nails, you can go in with your second coat. And for your second coat, you can take your time on it. Make sure you've covered your entire nail. You wanna make sure you're capping your free edge. And then you would just let it dry. With the West Coast Dips Top Coat, dip top coat it took it takes maybe like two to three minutes for it to dry for me it's actually a fairly quick drying dip top coat And of course, I'm finishing off my mani by rehydrating my cuticles. Today, I'll be using the body butter from Candy Skincare in the scent Moody Brew. This is their October sub scent, and it smells so good. It's like a nutty coffee flavor, and I'm obsessed with it. I think I need it in like all the things. And here is the finished look. What do you think? Is it too crazy? Did I go a little too extra? I just really wanted to try using all the colors in the box. But let me show you this glow. Look at how well this yellow glows. It is so bright. Like you can see my fingers glowing too. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. I know I went a little bit crazy, but I showed you kind of like a little bit of everything, right? So we've got the dip, We've got some freehand color blocking, some gel art liners, and then as well as some nail art stickers. So hopefully that was helpful. And you know, if there's anything else you want to see, please let me know. I'm happy to create a video on it. But can we just can we just stop and just admire these beautiful colors that came in the box? Like I just think they are just so cohesive and they're so beautiful and I couldn't be happier with this mystery box. They're just never disappointing. I always love them. And then of course her dip liquids are just so gorgeous. Just look at that beautiful shine of her dip top coat. So anyway, I could ramble on and on about West Coast dips. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this and it also helps YouTube recommend me to others. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.